Good morning. How's everybody today? First Sunday in Advent, first snow of the season, and uh, a baptism to boot. Doesn't get any better than that. So we're looking forward to that. So, uh, well, good morning uh, to everybody gathered in the sanctuary as well as those who are joining us today on Zoom and uh, Facebook Live. So the congregation is all together and uh, it is good that you are here. Um, a couple of announcements. I wanna lift up the fact that we do have coffee hour. And by the way, um, it's the best coffee in town. So, and, and the pastries are really amazing. So by all means, stop and enjoy. Uh, you're more than welcome to do so. The, the coffee bar is just over here, the other side of this wall, and uh, hopefully uh, you can join us for that. Um, what else do I have? Uh, this week, we get back to uh, Wednesdays wherever on Zoom, and uh, that'll start at seven o'clock. Bible study starts up again this week. We took last week off with uh, Thanksgiving. I, I do want to say that we had a uh, terrific, I'm really hot, huh? I, I had a, we had a terrific uh, service on Thanksgiving with uh, Succoth Indian community. We had lots of people, lots of different music, uh, lots of different food, um, and it was uh, just a wonderful celebration. And uh, it, was, uh, it was just fun to see how the spirit is moving between our communities as we find ways to celebrate the love of God uh, in the world around us. So I'm excited about that. And uh, uh, for those who were able to attend, great. And it was, it was a, a great thing indeed. Um, with that, I wanted to uh, uh, bring up Ashley Altman. Um, she, uh, Ashley last month took a trip out to Denver and uh, partly to attend a class to, and to learn about horticultural therapy and explore opportunities to expand this ministry of God's garden. She has a presentation to share with us. And, and the thing I wanna say about the whole God's garden thing, this is a developing ministry. It's, it's taking, it takes time to put these things together. But one, there is a lot of evidence that the more we play with the earth, the more we get engaged with the earth, it is good for the soul. And there's so many aspects of that. And uh, Ashley has been exploring this and is uh, beginning to put together a ministry that over time we'll be able to share with the larger community. And it is uh, definitely a demonstration of God's grace all around us as we uh, try to sort out what is that kingdom experience all about. And so with that, I'd like to invite Ashley up uh, to uh, share a few thoughts. Before I get into that, uh, for an announcement. Um, today we'll be making uh, Advent wreaths because it is, you know, the first event. Uh, um, I know we had a sign-up sheet. I don't care if you signed up. If you want to make a wreath, please join us. We have plenty of supplies. Um, we'll be in the conference room, which is, uh, if you go towards the co uh, coffee area, there's some doors, double doors. Go down there, keep going, um, and we'll be on the left. You'll see us, there's a sign that says conference room, so uh, please join us. Um, and out front, there are some uh, materials to take home um, that you can uh, use with your Advent wreath, the one you make or the one you already have, or you know, with the imaginary wreath in your head. Um, and we'll also be using these for our Wednesday nights wherever, so um, do that. Anyway, back to my other thing. Okay. One of the earliest stories I can recall learning was a story of connectedness, of order, of purpose, of nature. It was a story of creation. Six days with a seventh for rest, and it was good. It revolved around a garden and the exile from it, 
the separation from this harmonic, connected, and purposeful system is the beginning, the root of suffering. I grew up learning to ask, what does this mean? I still ask this all the time, all the time. But I find more recently, I ask another question. Did we miss the point? The exile was framed as a consequence of disobeying God. Moral of the story, don't disobey your parents. Uh, authority, resist temptation. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure, but I do know what the point was not. We have been separated from this perfect garden. We have neglected to call the call to care for creation. And we see the ramifications of this in heat waves, torrential rains, in life-giving waters made toxic, in millions of species under threat of extinction. In the church, we talk about brokenness and we talk about healing. We teach and talk in metaphors, many of which draw from the plant world. We see lessons in a mustard seed, a fig tree, and pruning the vine. Scientific research recognizes many ways we are harmed by disconnection from nature, but also how reconnection brings healing. Horticultural therapy takes this understanding and uses plants in a structured way to help patients achieve healing goals. With the cultivation and care for plants, horticultural therapy works to improve the physical and mental health of its participants. Programs can be tailored by a trained horticultural therapist to address specific needs of specific populations, like giving seniors an enhanced sense of purpose, improving the range of motion in a person recovering from surgery, or working on conflict resolution skills with teenagers. Mm -hmm. Through the framework of horticultural therapy, a person can achieve healing while also working to bring healing to the whole of creation. The ELCA's 1993 social statement on caring for creation acknowledges humanity's separation from God and from the rest of creation as the central cause of the environmental crisis. But it offers a therapy, action. We are not without agency. We are not without hope. Centering care for creation and the care for ourselves and others affirms our connection to nature and allows us to behave in ways that are consistent with the long-term sustainability of the planet. We may not be able to get back to the garden ourselves, but we can plant the seeds and cultivate a culture that heals our disconnection, and it will be good. Thank you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please stand if you are able. for a few minutes and we'll rise again but no we the baptism will uh we'll get started how you doing there okay come around the font well this is an exciting day one of the best days in the church here whenever we have a chance to baptize someone and to see the love of god that comes through the family and the friends and the parents to a, a little one and to share that love with us that's pretty good stuff it's a, a good way to kind of finish off the thanksgiving weekend i think with a big big bang 
Right, Grady? Yes. You agree? Absolutely. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to a new life in Christ Jesus. We are united with all of the baptized into one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for life in the world. And those uh, presenting great for baptism are invited to say, Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace of God, do you desire to have Grady baptized into Christ? As you bring uh, Grady to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with various responsibilities. To live with him in a, and among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place his hands in the Holy Scriptures, and to nurture him in faith and prayer, so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others, and, work, and for the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Grady grow in the Christian faith and life? The assembly may now rise. And you are asked, people of God, do you promise to support Grady and pray for him in his new life in Christ? We do. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you away from God? We renounce Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, God, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And you will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the The Lord be with you. And also with you. We give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by you, your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. And it's through the waters of the flood that you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea that you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live with you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, to those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right, and now we will baptize Grady. So we gotta kind of get him down here a little bit. Do you like being on your? Yeah, I like that. Hi, Grady. Carl Shipman, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have put on Christ, in him you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia.
let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Grady with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Grady, child of God, you have been sealed with the cross of Christ forever. your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ, into the mission we share, joining us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Can I see this little one? Grady, how are you? Are you okay? I just wanted to, I, I want to brag on you for a few minutes. I got to know your parents, and they are wonderful people. As a matter of fact, they were married here a few years ago. And I just wanted to uh, introduce you to all kinds of new brothers and sisters in Christ, and they will all be praying for you, and they're always going to be available to you, and this is a community of faith that you are always welcome in. And so we pray that your spirit of faith will continue to grow. Look at this guy. Isn't he something? He is too good, huh? A wonderful family. Look at that. You helped us uh, celebrate a special Thanksgiving this year. We even got the first snow today. Are you going to be a, a skier or something? Maybe you'll get into snow sports, eh? We'll see. Look at our little friend here. Hi. And so here's some. Okay, Grady. There we go. You're wonderful. God bless you and your family. Here you go. Thank you. You may be seated. Stir up your power of Lord Christ and come. By your merciful protect, protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins and redeem us for your life of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Now, one God, now and forever. Amen. everyone. I would like to invite anyone who is young of heart or young in age to come and join me this morning. Um, and you're, we're just going to just sit right up here because I discovered when I got up this morning there was a blue stocking on my kitchen table and I thought well what a strange thing and I thought well maybe I should bring it along and to see if you could help me figure out what's in there. So Anyway, I do see that there are some papers in here. Oh, and I see they spell some words along the way. And the words that I find, I, I see year, I see happy, and I see new. 
probably not in the correct order right now. So perhaps I could say New Year Happy, Year New Happy. Oh, I is Happy New Year. Why am I saying that now? That's normally reserved for January 1st. But as Pastor said earlier, today is the first Sunday of Advent, and it's a brand new year for our friend who was just baptized. And so I think you should have this sign of Happy New Year. And maybe we could see what this Happy New Year is all about. Oh, well, you know what? You cannot have these now, but you could have them later. And I'm going to give these to you so you can celebrate. You know, they're for a New Year party. But also, let's see there. Oh, there's another bag in here. And I noticed there were lots of things different in the church for this Happy New Year. I saw that there were blue colors on the altar and on the reading desk. And I saw that there was a wreath up there and it has three blue candles and a pink one and a white one. And then I saw that there was a manger over here. But it's not complete yet. It has a mom and a dad in there and a cow and a donkey, but there's no baby there yet. Not quite time, but we're getting ready for that baby to come. And so, Today, we are going to talk about what was on the outside of my stocking. It's the day of hope. And that's what the new year can bring to us. Hope for this troubled world, the hope that Jesus will bring for us. And so we're going to light that candle, a blue candle up there, a candle of hope. But then I also see there were some prayers in this bag. And the prayer says this. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let this time to us be blessed. Amen. May that be all of our Advent prayers. And you need to have one of those to share with your moms and dads. And we light our first candle on the wreath. God of good hope, as we light the first candle on this wreath, wake us up that we may be ready to greet Jesus when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Amen. us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Light a candle of hope for the coming of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. first reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judea. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judea will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the time by which it will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my 
The second reading this morning is from Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make your increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And, <clears throat> and may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus and with all saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please, oh, please stand as you are able for a reading of the gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all of the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all of these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this world and the day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap 
for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all of these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Did we miss it? Have we missed the coming of Christ? In our faith, we, we, we talk about a few different types of com comings, the smaller comings of Christ that take place every day, and then the bigger one, the bigger coming of Christ. And so, as believers, as someone who is looking at living a life in the kingdom, we need to remember and recognize that God is already here, is he not? That Christ is risen, hasn't he? He is risen indeed, hallelujah. Christ is here, present, risen. Christ is present here today. Christ is present in millions of churches around the world. Everybody is seeing and hearing and experiencing Christ almost at the same time. It makes you wonder, did the big coming already happen? Or is it happening every day? It's hard to fully know. But one thing we do know is that the Holy Spirit is upon us. We are given the strength and, and the reserve to connect our faith with life all around. And so we can miss it, or maybe not. You know, years ago, I, uh, I joined AA, and my my sponsor was a, a real wise man. He had been clean for, I don't know, 20 or 30 years. He probably was about my age now, uh, over 32 years ago. And, I, and he said, you know, Mark, how we relate with one another, how we relate with life around us will largely determine the quality of your sobriety, the quality of your life. It's useless to harbor ill will against anyone. It's important to recognize that all humanity is profoundly sacred. And we must begin to try to understand just who we are and where we are in connection with each other. Everyone has a story, he said. Everyone's here trying to find a better way. It's almost like an emergency room. People gathering together, trying to make sense out of life, taking a step beyond the bounds of the normal existence into a community that is rooted in prayer and hope. He said, Mark, you have to resist judging others because as soon as you do, there's a rusty nail that's imprinted in your soul, and it'll spread. And at some point, the pain will be so great that it'll lead you back to drinking. He talked about the power of forgiveness and the fact that it is best that we do not judge. And so I took that message to heart, and I did find peace in it. And I began to look at life a little bit differently. That, this, that, that God really is in all of us and around us. And there was this guy, uh, this father of this baseball team that my son was a part of that I really struggled to, to like or to know. He had a, uh, I don't know, he was kind of a braggart. He was, or I thought he was. He thought he was better than everyone, or I thought he did. And I grew to uh, not care for him. And as I would be going to a baseball event, I would think about this guy, and it would give me a pain in the gut. Um, and I thought about what my sponsor said. And I decided, you know what? I am going to get to know him. I'm going to sit next to him. I'm going to watch baseball games with him. He was a former pro ball player. He knew a lot. And we uh, sat, and we watched baseball. But over time, we started to talk. We talked about our families. We talked about our work. We talked about success and failure. 
We talked about a lot of things. There were even a few tears shed once in a while. And we became good friends. He was now a part of my life. I no longer judged him, and I'm grateful. Do we miss God in our midst? Do we get too caught up in judging others? I don't know. Now in today's lesson though, Jesus is on the side of the Mount of Olives. Earlier in this conversation, his disciples were talking about the uh, temple and uh, how majestic it was, how big it was, how amazing it was. You see, Jesus and his disciples had been uh, at the temple for the last three or four days. This is Wednesday uh, of Holy Week. So then they're at the temple, they're on the Mount of Olives right now, they're talking about things, and then the next day will be good Last Supper, the next day, Good Friday, and it moves on from there. So things are really getting heated up. And the disciples, uh, they, they ask Jesus about this temple. He says, it's going to come down. Everything you see here is going to come down. It will not exist. And of course, today the disciples ask the question, well, when's this going to happen? Right. And Jesus, recognizing that the world in which they were living was, it was a very tenuous world between Rome and the various sects of Judaism, Gentiles and so on. This whole social, economic, religious milieu could not realistically be sustained. It was in the air, you could smell it. And he told them what would happen. 40 years later, something happened. Forty years later, the temple was destroyed. And over the next 60 to 70 years, Palestine was ravaged in all kinds of ways. The world that they thought they understood absolutely did not exist. It was gone. Most of those disciples saw it with their own eyes. They saw a world that was radically changed. Jesus tried to remind his disciples in the upper room that next night, he, had, he tried to remind them, you know, we've done great things together. You're going to do greater things than I, he told those disciples. So take heart, that much more is going to happen. That much more is going to happen. Today, there are... <laughs> Some members of the Christian community, I think we may focus too much on this big second coming without recognizing just how present Christ is in our lives right now. Whatever that is or isn't is almost not for us to understand. But what is for us to understand is that we are children of God, profoundly loved, gifted with the capability of sharing God's love with each other in the world around us. And that's something we can hold on to. It's something we can build upon. And as I was saying last week, we live in a world that's very contentious. We hear so much negativity. We hear people almost putting to death spiritually people they don't agree with, that there could be no good in the other. We have this challenge to tamp that down, to tamp that down and to open our eyes and to see what God sees, to see life, hope, brokenness, and as we see what God sees, you see, we have the opportunity to experience that much more of his grace. Now, Jesus, after this visit on the Mount of Olives, 
He, uh, the next day, he has his last supper. He's confronted by Pilate and the temple leadership. And uh, in the end, he's convicted of disturbing the peace. He stirred things up. Not only that last week, but for a few years. He gave people hope that the system didn't want to give hope, but he gave a lot of people hope. And uh, he wouldn't back down. He stirred it up. He gave us a model of what shalom is, compassion, mercy, justice, and forgiveness. He gave us that model. And he said, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross and follow me. The good news is he didn't compromise. He didn't give in, he didn't give up. He showed us God's love, the fullness, the completeness of God's love, a love that's so hard for us to fully fathom, but he showed us. Of course, he died and he rose again, and we declare he is risen, and we have access to his spirit every single day. We have access to remembering our baptisms every day, that we're washed anew at the beginning of every day. No matter where we were yesterday, or no matter what we thought, we have this new day. And here we are, the first Sunday in Advent, a season of waiting, of anticipation, to open our eyes with the wonder of a child. When I think of Advent, I, I think of, I do think of this color. I think of uh, the star of Bethlehem. I think of blue, I think of lights. I think of peace. And somehow I, it seems like it's out there but if we venture deeper into God's hope for us, we realize it's in here as well. We all are part of that. We all are points of light. We all have the opportunity to share God's love with a world that desperately needs it. Amen.
In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. God of hope, your message calls us to let go of our fears and place our trust in you. Sustain us in your hope as we await your coming. to the lowly, those who are sick, those who mourn, those who are hungry, and all in need of your care. break into our weary world with news of great joy and gladness. Invade our tired and saddened lives with the joy that only you can give. as your beloved children through Christ. Take hold of our hearts and shine your love through our lives. new life. You come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
God, our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives. To the service of all your people, prepare the way before us as we meet with you in this simple meal. Through Jesus Christ, our pathway and our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should, and at all times and in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comfort your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending night our Lord was betrayed, he took his disciples up into an upper room. He, he washed their feet. He prayed with them. He preached to them. He talked with them. He saw each one of these disciples as uniquely gifted to take the message of peace forward to the next generation. He recognized their worry and their fears. And before the meal began, he broke bread. He gave it to each of his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. And then after the meal was over, he took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. We know that with the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are strengthened to do his work in a world that desperately needs it. And so together, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who are trespassed against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This is the body of Christ given for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please stand. God blesses us and sends us into the mission to the world. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Jesus Christ, our host and our guest, amen. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in the hope and the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ from whom we wait. Amen. Amen.